What's going on? It's a Hawkeye? She's in trouble. So this piece of info is supposed to be confidential, but whatever. Barry told me the Colonel's got a plan to smoke out some military guys he's been after. The ones from the 5th something or other. 5th laboratory, right. So much for confidential. I gotta find them. This could lead us straight Ooh. to the person who killed Lieutenant Hughes. I'll be back soon. Nice. Are we gonna have an owl adventure? Just be careful. I will. I promise. Ooh. I feel a little bit worried for Al. It's weird because we've never had the brothers separated, I don't think. Al alone is really interesting. I mean, he's a capable guy, but he's just so nice, you know? He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Episode 19, Death of the Undying. Are you all done now? Then it's time to eat you. I hate this guy. Black Hayate. Nice. Yes. Kill him. <laughs> I get to have dinner and dessert. Nice, that Roy. Yeah, he'll be alright though. I barely made it. Oh. Colonel? Where the hell did you leave your post? You're welcome. Who the heck was that fat guy? Gluttony, the worst humunculi. Colonel. What is it? Thanks for saving us back there. There it Tell is. Tell me later. Let's just stay focused on the mission for now. Damn, he's so professional. <laughs> what was that look? Love and admiration at the same time. Are you trying to go after Mr. Hughes' murderer? You win? <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. He's just ready to go. He's like, yeah, get in the car. Let's go, Al. Roy's so damn cool, man. I feel like in real life, he's the kind of guy you, you hate. He just gives off this air that he's better than you. Because he is. <laughs> he is better than you. He's the man. He's, like, so focused. He has, like, all these characteristics that are just so great together. He's driven. He's intelligent. He's powerful. But also, he has just that little tint of, like, slacker. Roy's that kid in school who doesn't do any work and never gets any crap from it from teachers and gets A's. You know what I mean? It can be infuriating. But the other side of that is like absolute respect and devotion because you can feel it. And so it's no surprise that he has such loyal followers. I love it. Don't let him get away. Damn, Barry's fast. So do you think we can expect another appearance from that blubber beast back there? I doubt it. I scorched him off the ledge. Yeah, and I shot him in the head. How much does he know about homunculi at this point? He didn't have an Ouroboros tattoo, did he? A tattoo? Well, actually, yeah. On his tongue. In that case, we were probably dealing with a homunculus. I mean, I know they've gathered intelligence on them, though. Like, they had the, uh, the pictures of them when they were interrogating Barry the first time. But I guess they just don't know the extent of their powers, which makes sense. Also, I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, but the homunculi have tattoos that are related to their sin. Gluttony's is on his tongue, obviously. I think Lust is on her boobs. I can't remember the other homunculi, but it probably applies there too. I watched Greed get the top half of his head knocked off, but he was perfectly fine a minute later. They're True real, story. all right. My body ran in there. Seems to think it can hide from me. The third laboratory, huh? Mm. So there are other laboratories. So this ties them directly to the military. Right. That's all we need for now. We're pulling back. Well, you have fun with that. Get back here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but they could use this as a distraction. All personnel must evacuate immediately. Um, Colonel, stay back. The man who broke in is a deranged murderer. Smart. Very clever. We're gonna have to split up. Yes, sir. Does not seem like a good idea, but okay. Whatever they did here was painful for someone. Well, now, I am just shocked. Ooh. It's bad enough that you stood me up on our date. Oh yeah, that's right. They were dating. Hey, Havoc. Your girl's got the tattoo. Yeah. First I've seen it, sir. <laughs> Quit Liar. staring. It's not very polite. Well, I can see how she tricked you so easily. You've always been a sucker for big boobs. <laughs> Even at a moment I like can't this. Help it. I love him. I mean. You know. Do you know who Mace Hughes is? Oh, yes, he was quite the intelligent man, wouldn't you agree? I only wish I'd had the opportunity to pick his brain. <gasps> Wasting no time. Sorry to say. 
But it's gonna take more than you're capable of to make me get on my own. He's just not allowing the villain speech to happen. How merciless. Did you pick that up in Ishval? Huh? Oof. You're a homunculus. Indeed. How very astute of you, Jean. Take a good look, boys. Mm. It's a philosopher's stone. You're a monster. That was uncalled for. I do have feelings. Apart from a few things, I was made nearly identical to you. I am human. It's interesting that she considers herself human. Human, but indestructible. I'm surprised that their paths intersected here. The show is crazy. You never know where it's going to go, like one episode to the next. I have a really bad feeling someone's going to die. I've got a funny feeling the only reason you're telling us this is because you don't plan on letting us live. Right. Yeah. It's such a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Too slow. Oh no, water! This one weakness. What are we gonna do? She'll shred us with her freaky fingers! No, she made a big mistake. She flooded the room with water. A simple transmutation and we've got hydrogen gas. Why is everyone so clever in this show? They're all so studied. But no, actually, that's a great thing. I mean, I, one thing I like about alchemy and this whole system is that it's not just like innate power they're born with. It's like a result of hard work. The people who want it the most, the people who dedicate the most, end up being the best at alchemy, it seems. Which is pretty cool. Nice. She's gonna survive this stuff. Uh, crap. It's a good thing Havoc smokes. How do you know for sure, sir? The stench. I'm pretty familiar with that stink by now. You mean from that time you spent in Ishval? Roy is so open about the Ishval thing. It's interesting. It's almost like a defense. Like he leads with it. He puts it right out there in the open. I don't know how he actually feels about it. He may have regrets or see it as largely justified, but it doesn't seem like it's something that can affect him externally, like from other people criticizing him. For all we know, she could still regenerate. So stay alert. Yes, sir. <laughs> That doesn't look good. Yeah, she can regenerate. He's a dead man. No, he's not. Give up. There's nothing you can do that'll kill me. Then you won't mind if I borrow this. Wow. Did he just kill her? Whoa. Needed to save Havoc. What is going on? This show is crazy. The stakes are just so high every episode. I don't know that much about medicinal alchemy, but this should amplify my abilities. It She's regrowing like from the Philosopher's Stone. Dinner first. Damn. You stick your hand in her chest. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is going on? This is insane. And now Bradley's here? Colonel Mustang and his men are in pursuit. Well then, I'll give him some backup. Very good. We're right behind you, sir. No. I'll do it myself, I to of course. It on my own. These are not looking good for Roy, because even if he gets through Lust, he's got Bradley waiting at the other end. And Lust is looking immortal right now. Pretty sure Havoc is dead at this point. This show does such a fantastic job of this. Things happen. It's like things really happen. Like most shows have the villains and the heroes or whatever, the characters clashing. There's a battle or whatever, it looks cool, and then at the end of the day, not much has changed. This show, you just never know episode to episode who's going to make it out alive. And the way this show establishes that is just so good because it keeps you so on edge. Like, I have no idea how this is going to play out. Someone's going to die. I mean, probably, at the very least, Gene Havoc. I told you, the Philosopher's Stone's my core. I really hate to do this. You were a prime candidate for sacrifice and all. Well, I was also a candidate. I want you to watch poor Jean bleed to death. Then you can die. Jean, hey, answer me. Jean's gone. Sorry, but you got, got here him. too late. Look at this mess. My body is damn near entirely decayed. I guess a body just can't hold up with someone else's soul being shoved inside of it. <gasps> Poor Al. If a soul it's just is one existential crisis after another. Body, wouldn't it be the same for a soul bonded to a suit of armor? If that's right, 
There's no guarantee I'll be able to stay in this form long enough to get our old bodies back. So much for immortality. You're such a handful, 66. And I'm sad to see you here, armor boy. You just had to tag along. Talk about a setback. It's bad enough to lose one. But now you're forcing me to kill a second candidate. Candidate? A second one? Lots of questions being raised. What is a candidate? And for Al, who else did she kill? That's enough of the casual chit chat lust. All I want to hear from you is screaming! Ah! Whoa. But he's still alive. We know that it's about the seal, right? I think I was about to send the lieutenant to join her superior. Now she knows. You didn't! <laughs> you bitch! She has a lot of guns. Damn, she just gave up. Such a sad and weak creature. Another typical human. There we go. Stand up, Lieutenant. You need to get out of here. Do you want me to kill you first? Nice! I'm still worried about Al, though. Such a shame. You are a perfect candidate. Hell yeah. Run! I won't! Go! I won't leave you! I'm sick of watching people die, and I can't just sit back and take it anymore! I won't let anyone else get killed! Not when I can protect them! Wow. Damn, Alphonse. I love how they're using the experience to show, like, Al's growth and strength. It's all connected, their journey. Their experiences were not nothing, they weren't standalone episodes. It's building their ethos. Feels like Al is really growing up, which is not surprising, considering everything he's been through. But I'm really happy he's able to make a stand here by himself, that's so cool. Well spoken. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> nice, I wasn't ready for that. Like I can get you on your knees after all. He's using the flint for ignition. And he Damn, he looks the cool. Transmutation circle into his hand. Wow. I seared the wound closed. I came close to passing out from the pain. I was talking about Roy being cool, but whoa! What the heck? You told me I couldn't kill you, but I'd like to try and prove you wrong. So let's see. How many times is it gonna take? This is brutal. This is some great voice acting. Whoa! Did he really just kill Lust? I love how cold and focused your eyes are. <gasps> I look forward to the day when those eyes will be wide with agony. It's coming. It's coming. Holy... That was nuts. What an awesome scene. I can't believe Lust just died. Take Gluttony instead. <laughs> Damn it. I was talking about Roy being cool, right? This is a whole other level. The first person to kill a homunculi, except for greed and the whole juice thing. But the first person to kill a homunculi. And less, no less. Roy's having a great couple episodes. Thank you for looking after my subordinate. Yeah, sure. We need to call you a doctor. Oh, yeah. Hurry. Call a doctor for Havoc. Please. Hmm. Okay, they got lucky there, but that makes sense. Why he'd want to not reveal his involvement. He's all right. <laughs> Poor Winry. Right. Always waiting. Uh. 
Quinry is me at the start of the episode, worrying about Al by himself. Uh, hey, I'm home now. <laughs> Moron! Welcome back! Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, uh, well, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're gonna get it. It might seem like a small thing, but like credit to Winry, it's tough. It's always tough to be the one waiting. Like if you're the one going off somewhere, at least you have that thing that you're doing to distract you. Whereas the other person is just in their old life, but without you. And it's really hard to wait, feeling powerless. It's like Ed and Al are in more danger, but Winry has a hard emotional battle too. Constantly struggling to have faith that things will be okay. I hope someone can fix me. I'd rather not live my life as sheet metal. <laughs> oh, what the, how the hell are you still alive? Hey! Don't touch oh, that. Oh no, put me down right now! I've got a second chance to terrorize the city! You're gonna ruin everything! No! Don't do it! Wait! No, oh no! Me. Well, that's in a Barry. I can't say I'm too torn up about that as far as deaths go, but I will say for Barry, he was a lot better of a character than I thought he would be at first. Compared to when we were first introduced to him till the end, he grew on me a lot. Rest in peace, Barry the Meat Man. Always with the orange sparkles. Is that his father? It is. Can't be. Is it? What does he want? How I know him. Huh. This is poking major holes in my theory that Ed's father is the father, the Hewankilai father. But knowing this universe and knowing a little bit about Ed's father, this is not a friendly father-son visit. There's something that he needs Ed for. Maybe it's his candidacy. Who knows? I'll have to wait and see what happens. But my god, what an episode. That was insane. I feel like that's how you do an action episode. It's not just like people showing off their powers. It had real stakes at every moment. Lust was definitely a major character and she's dead. Although, I guess there's a possibility that Father could bring her back since she was created, right? But the way that she was killed, it was so dramatic, it felt like a death, you know what I mean? And also, we lost Barry. It's like, so many things happened this episode. The scene where Roy killed Lust is just phenomenal. It's top-notch. Like, it was so insane and really, really well voice acted. It was kind of horrific to watch, even with Lust as a villain, right? Like, seeing her being burned and her screams of agony right it's kind of chilling but roy comes out of it a lot cooler and also some interesting development for al this is the first time we really got to see him shine outside of being with ed i mean it's the only time we've ever seen him away from ed if i can remember and he stepped up like he's becoming an adult you know like he's actually like connecting his journey and his convictions to his actions and to his power which is really fun to watch al is a force you know he could be a force in the world he and ed together are seeming more powerful than ever but i also like how this sort of brought him closer to hawkeye and mustang it seems like through the course of the show so far there were sort of like independent things Things going on right we had like ed and al and their adventure and we had the military thing building now it seems like mustang's journey and the brother's journey is has intersected in a very real way which is a lot of fun it's sort of like everybody has their own separate motivations but they can't help but be put on this path towards the humunculi because of what a force they are and because they are also involved in the humunculi plan really enjoyed it can't wait to watch more uh, i'll see you guys next time for episode 20. Bye.